It's been a while. Unbeknownst to me, my brother's fiancé turned out to be none other than you, my former servant from middle school. I was really surprised. Hey, Karen. It's been a while. I was surprised too. Little did I know that the individual who subjected me to bullying, causing me to endure difficulties in my education, happened to be my fiancé's sister. Hey, don't attribute your own vulnerabilities to me as if it's my fault. You were socially isolated and did not integrate well into the club at all. In my role as the club leader, I made genuine efforts to engage with you in a constructive manner. Are you serious about that? We were on the volleyball team. I became the target of all the senior members who relentlessly pelted me with balls. Furthermore, you and your group consistently departed first, leaving me behind to handle the cleanup alone. Did you even make an attempt to confine me inside the gym? Moreover, I am aware that you were spreading false and malicious rumors about me. It's your own fault that you have a bad personality. By what logic are you saying that? Because of you, I didn't even make it to the graduation ceremony. I was glad you weren't in the group photo for a club. If you were in the picture, you would have ruined it. Still the same even in your mid-thirties. Well, I'm glad it was you who became my brother's wife. Huh? My brother's wife, that would make us sisters-in-law, right? I will use you as my servant for the rest of my life. Is that what you think? Call me your leader like you used to on the team. I don't want to. What? Besides, I have no intention of becoming your servant. Oh, wow. Have you become a big shot in the little time we've been apart? You can disobey me. A weaker-minded person like you needs to be told what to do. What makes you a stronger person than me? I just am. I don't understand what you mean. If you insist on defying me, I won't allow you to marry my brother. You'll have no right to interfere with our marriage. Hey, remember who isolated you from the rest of the school by spreading rumors about you? Who do you think it was? If I told my parents and brother, it would be easy for them to break off your engagement. I could just tell them you're playing around with other guys. Oh, or maybe I should tell them that you were a truant in middle school and hang out with the wrong people. How about that? Please don't. Don't ruin our engagement by making up lies. You're so desperate. You know my dad runs a company, right? So what? Actually, I work there. I work short hours because I want to live freely, but of course, among the employees. I'm the president's daughter, so I'm looked up to. If I were to tell these employees that my brother, who will take over this company in the future, is about to marry a useless woman like to you, how do you think they will react? So much fun! I'll talk about it at work tomorrow. Please don't do that. Then be my servant. Here, why don't you call me leader? I won't do that. Please give me time until tomorrow. All right. In the meantime, be prepared to pledge your allegiance to me. I love how hopeless you are. I'll text you tomorrow. Hey! My servant! Have you made up your mind? For starters, I need you to go to my office and do some work for me. Of course, I'm willing to pay you. I'll give you about $200 a month. Hi, Karen. How are you? You don't get to call me by my name. Why not? Are you really going to act like that towards me? Who do you think I am? I'm serious. If you disobey my orders, I will not allow you to marry my brother. I will tell my parents that I don't want him to marry you and I will break up your engagement. Then financing for your company is not going to happen. Huh? What do you mean? If this engagement doesn't happen, the financial help to your father's company will be terminated. What? 
I don't understand. What does the financial help for my dad's company have to do with your engagement? What's the connection? You haven't heard from your parents. I also run a company, like your father. Huh? Yes, and my company has about 500 employees. 500 is a whole lot more than my dad's company. Thankfully, the services my company provides match the public demand. Even with 500 employees, we are so understaffed. What? How can a miserable person like you be the president of a company? I was really depressed during school, thanks to you. To try to redeem myself, I studied hard. I haven't told this story to any of my classmates either. In case you're wondering, I graduated from South University. South University? Isn't it that really good school with a low acceptance rate? Yes. And since college, I've been working with people like myself who have been shut-ins. And for those who want to reintegrate into society but are too afraid to take the first step. I wanted to help them and do something for them. So I started this company. I am now working hard in the education and job placement industry. Then, that financing help means? That means financial help from my company to your father's company. Wait a minute! So in exchange for letting you marry my brother, you're going to finance my dad's company? Don't get me wrong. I am marrying your brother, purely for love. However, him being a future president of the company. He asked me for advice, since his father's company was not doing so well and was having financial difficulties. He told me a lot about what company offered and other things. So I advised him. Your father has approached me and asked me if I would be willing to be a consultant for his company. To take on new challenges, money is inevitably needed. Then, instead of borrowing from a bank, I thought it would be less risky to lend him money from my company, since I'm becoming his in-law anyway. If I were to participate in the management of his company, I would be partly responsible for the results if they did not come through. That is why I was planning to start financing his company when we got married. But if you, will now be my sister-in-law, is so opposed to our marriage, I have no choice. I love your brother. But I will give up on this marriage. I am sorry for the trouble. Wait a minute! Is my dad's company not doing well? It's probably just a matter of time before they go bankrupt. Are you serious? What am I supposed to do if that happens? I have only worked for my dad's company. Your parents have told me things about you. I think it would be a good idea for you to become more independent. What do you mean? I'm working and making money. You've been working only short hours ever since you graduated from college. You can take a day off whenever you want. You never have to do a job you don't want to do. Despite living in your parents' house, you never gave your parents a penny of your salary. How can someone who spends money as she pleases say such a thing? Did my dad tell you that? Why don't you at least pay rent or something? I don't want to. I've heard a lot about you from the employees too. You work only short hours, but you make people listen to you, don't you? As you can imagine, that made me laugh. Shut up! I'm the president's daughter, so I'm allowed to do that. Everyone needs to respect me. They are only putting up with you because they know who you are. There is nothing more annoying than an employee who doesn't do anything at work. It's none of your business. You're right. Our engagement's been cancelled. And I will no longer be financing your father's company or company. Your company's situation is none of my business. Wait a minute! What do you need? Shouldn't marrying my brother and financing my dad's company be two separate things in the first place? What? 
I'm saying don't confuse your personal life with your work life. How can you tell me that? You're taking advantage of your possession as the daughter of the president. We're talking about you right now. You decided to finance this company because you thought it had the potential for growth. Then, even if your engagement with my brother breaks up, keep the promises you made. Hmm. Somehow you seem to think you're saying something very right. I think you should understand the situation of the company you're working for one more time. As I said before, I think there is a chance to rebuild the business. But my future father-in-law, oh wait. No more engagement, so your father. Well, the bottom line is that the president thought it was impossible for them to do it on their own, which is why they asked me to do the consulting. If I were to make a full commitment, and if I were to finance his company, then they would finally reach a level where maybe he can rebuild his business. Sorry to say, but no one would normally think of financing such a company. It's too risky. Even if we could rebuild the business, we cannot expect a large return. Still, I decided to finance it because it is a company that my future husband will be running. For those reasons, now that the engagement has been cancelled, I have no reason to finance his company. Do you understand? Oh! Okay, okay. I'll let you get married to my brother then. Huh? What are you saying? I have no intention of marrying him anymore. Why not? Because he has an annoying sister like you. There's no way I would want to marry him. Why not? Without financial help from you, my dad's company will go under, right? Probably. I can't let that happen. But either way, sooner or later you're going to lose your job. What do you mean? Yesterday, after receiving a text from you, I told your parents the whole story. Then, your father said I'm so sorry about her daughter. We shouldn't have spoiled her because she is a girl. She doesn't work enough and I've been receiving numerous complaints from employees. I will fire her in the near future and kick her out of this house, so don't worry about a daughter. That's what he said. Are you kidding me? All true. How dare you? I can't live alone. Who's gonna cook for me? Do my laundry? Who's gonna clean my room? What about money? You're 35 years old, what nonsense are you talking about? Of course, you earn your own money pay your own rent. And do your own housework. I don't want to! I want to live freely in my parents' house. Look, I'm not complaining about you guys getting married anymore. You don't have to be my servant. So please tell my parents not to kick me out. I will not finance them if you keep living in your parents' house. But then your father's company would go out of business, so the end result is the same. How can that be? Oh, and since this is a good opportunity, I would like to ask you to take responsibility for what you did to me when we were in middle school. What responsibility? Because of you I have trauma. It was emotionally difficult not only for myself but also for my parents. The damages for emotional distress, the cost of the psychiatrist visits, I will charge you $30,000. That was a long time ago. Your parents said that they would not only kick you out of their house, but also disown you. All right, all right. I'll pay. I pay you when you're happy, right? But I can't pay you right now. I can pay in installments, right? No. Of course, you must pay it in full. What are you, evil? What are you talking about? I'm giving you such kindness even though you bullied me so much in middle school. This is what you deserve. Subsequently, Karen faced termination from her father's company and was subsequently evicted from her parents' residence. With her absence secured, I could finally proceed with my wedding plans. After a few months, our long-awaited ceremony took place. 
Despite her attempt to attend, we courteously clarified the situation to her and kindly requested her departure. Since then, she has successfully secured alternative employment and embarked on an independent living arrangement in her own apartment. However, this marks her inaugural experience in a professional setting, and she grapples with the challenges of acclimatizing to the work environment on a daily basis. In order to provide me with compensation, she incurred significant debt, resulting in a difficult financial situation for her. Leaving her unable to afford even basic expenses or enjoy leisure activities. Frequently, she attempts to seek solace from her parents through tears, yet her pleas have fallen on deaf ears as her parents remain unresponsive to her predicament. Alternatively, her parents are preoccupied with the ongoing restructuring of their company, leaving little time or attention for her situation. As a result of their efforts, their company's business is rebounding. However, I have made the decision to sever ties with her and refrain from maintaining any future relationship. Hey Amity, have you found a place to stay yet? Or are you still at your parents? I'm just asking because I'm going to take Roy to see his parents next week. I was hoping you'd be out when we arrived so there wouldn't be any awkwardness. Why haven't you found a place yet? Parents are not comfortable when you are still there. I know. I'll leave as soon as I can, but it won't be easy. And I'm still stuck in the trouble that happened. What do you mean? What trouble happened? Well, the trouble is my little sister stole my fiancé. Or all the terrible things you accused me of doing to make me look bad and justify what you did. I'm just still in shock about everything. Please. Let's get over it. You are being treated like a villain because you are the villain here. Only people who know they have done wrong will complain about being unjustly accused. That doesn't make any sense, Mila. What are you talking about? I am absolutely correct. I didn't force Roy to fall in love with me. It just happened. What can I do? You're too bad for him and always nag about responsibilities and other boring things. No wonder he doesn't really want to marry you. Of course it's all your fault. You can fool others, but of all people you cannot fool me. You fell down the stairs yourself and then told everyone I pushed you. Although I was not near you at that time. All I do is tell the truth. I sprained my ankle very badly that fall. It's heartless when you don't care at all. Of course I care, but it was your carelessness that brought you down. And then you took advantage of the fact that there was no one around to blame me. I don't understand how my parents can believe such an obvious lie. And somehow, you were able to use it to turn me into a horrible person and take Roy away from me. I'm not. Roy was mine by then. He loves me, so of course he's on my side. Is there something else you need me to explain to you? Looks like you have no one left to be with. You better disappear now, okay? Trust me, I understand that. No one is willing to see the real you. What do you know? I'm so tired of this. I dragged my feet as I moved because I was hoping someone would wake up and realize what was going on. But I guess that won't happen. I'm going out of the house today. I can't handle any of you anymore. Very good. You made it perfectly clear. There's not a single person I can rely on in my own family. No one can see the truth even if it is right in front of them. Sorry? That is rude. You pushed me down the stairs. They only treat you that way because you deserve it. You can say whatever you want at this point. I'm leaving soon, so nothing you can say is important to me anymore. Say whatever your crazy mind comes up with. I'm packing up my things right now, so leave me alone. Two hours later. Hey. Have you gone? I made an appointment with an apartment manager to view an apartment. Okay, good. Then you should go out early. It won't take long to clean up, right? It's not like you have anything of value to pack. I packed everything I needed to bring. Thanks to someone sneaking into my room and stealing a bunch of my stuff. What? I'm not. 
I didn't steal anything. I just took what you said I could have. It's your fault for buying clothes and things that don't suit you. I am much more beautiful than you, so it makes sense for me to take it all from you. I said someone stole from me. I have never accused you of anything. Oh. Thanks for the confirmation, though. I doubt it will change anything, but at least I have proof of your theft. Oh my god! You are so annoying! You just need to leave! I'm leaving now. Good. I'm glad I don't have to deal with you anymore. In the end, nothing stood in my way. Oh, one more thing, Mila. Roy has blocked my number, so I need you to text me. What? If he doesn't return the $3,000 he borrowed from me by the end of the month, I'll take him to court for it. What? What $3,000? He already knows how to give me money, so if you can send him that text that would be great. Thank. If he has any questions, he can send them through you or unblock me and wonder. Ridiculous. Why did he borrow your money? He works at a big company and earns a lot of money. You barely make a living. There is no way this is true. You're making up stories because you don't want to let him go. I'm not and I can prove it. I have a written promise from him to return it. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You have nothing. Look, I really don't care if you believe me or not. Just give him a message, okay? I'm sure he'll tell you why he borrowed money from me if you ask him. I didn't tell him anything. Stop here. This is not a funny joke. It just makes you look desperate. Whatever. It's up to you. I'm leaving now. I really hope I never have to go back. Bye, Mila. Several months later. Amity. Guess. I have some great news. Roy proposed to me. Reply to my message. You don't have to ignore me. It's so romantic. He proposed while we were walking together on the beach. The sun is setting and it's perfect. It was the sweetest thing ever. Oh. Congratulations. We started talking about the wedding. We are planning with a budget of about $50,000. Perhaps a little more when all is said and done. Really? I think you won't get that hope. That's a lot of money. Please. You are just jealous. No. I just know that he doesn't have that much money and neither does our family. Oh come on, don't be like that. Stop being such a demeaning person. I know what your negative attitude really is. Who cares that he had to borrow some money from you before? Now that is over and his financial situation is very different from then. Besides, he told me that he returned your money a few days after I sent him your message. Oh right. Well, I appreciate that you sent the message. He told me that at first he only had to borrow from you because of some unexpected expenses. You are ruthless trying to get that money back. It just reveals how selfish you really are when you do such things. That is absolutely not what happened. Look, Mila. All I wanted was a clean breakup between you and me and I almost got it. I don't understand why you feel the need to brag to me about how happy you two are. You won. Leave me alone. I apologize for assuming you wanted time to prepare for the wedding. I guess you love being blindsided by wedding invitations. Are you serious right now? After all that's happened, I think I'll be the last person you want to invite to your wedding. Of course I want you there. We are family. I'm not trying to brag about anything, I just wanted to share the news with my sister. I didn't want any drama if you found out from someone else so I thought I'd tell you myself. I wouldn't have started any drama regardless of how I found out. I told you, 
I just want to move on and heal after all this. Okay, fine. Let's do it that way. Do you need anything else? Well, I guess not. I have to go back to work. God, really? Today is Saturday. Why are you working? Are you so poor that you have to do a side job or something? No wonder you ask Roy to give you that money. I changed careers and entered the hospitality industry. Weekend is just another day for me now. Oh. I didn't know you changed careers. Thanks to you, I'm actually making quite a bit of money now. The salary here is higher than where I worked before and I don't have to pay anything to my parents or help Roy anymore. What do you mean, thank me? Isn't it obvious? If you hadn't betrayed me, I wouldn't be here as I am now. I don't think there's anything else to do or say at this point. Goodbye. Several months later. Amity! Reply to my messages now! I need you! What do you want? I can't really talk. I'm at work right now. Are you ready to congratulate me? Congratulation? For what? Is your wedding coming up? I congratulated you for that. Yes, it's next Sunday. You congratulated me when I told you that Roy proposed, but I wanted to talk to you about the wedding gift you gave us. We're sisters, so $50,000 would be the right amount to give us, I think. I'm sorry, what now? Are you seriously asking me to give you $50,000? Have you lost your mind? You are my big sister. You should want to help me in any way you can. You can't put a price tag on how much sisters mean to each other. Wow, I don't even know where to start with all that. But I think I know what's going on here. You finally realize the financial situation you're in, right? You can't afford the big, expensive wedding you want, so you expect someone else to give you cash. No, it's not like that. You went bankrupt. Let's admit it. It's not true. I have a little money. No. You refuse to do anything other than a part-time job so you don't make much money. And what you earn, you'd rather spend on useless things and hang out than try to save. On top of that, your parents probably still give you pocket money whenever you ask for it. Although they really don't have the ability to do that. So you have no reason to try to save any money, right? And sure, Roy works for a big company, so you might think you can rely on him for money. But he is only a temporary employee. That won't last forever. How do you know that? Because I was engaged to him first. There's nothing about him that I don't know yet. I'm going to go out and say you've just discovered that temporary employees earn much less than permanent employees. That's why you suddenly asked for money before the wedding day. The reason he had to borrow money from me in the past was because he was temporarily laid off when the company downsized. He needs help just to make ends meet until he gets his next temporary job. I didn't expect him to be able to pay me off immediately after I told you about the debt. I wonder where he borrowed the money to do that. He said he has money and he just forgot to give it back to you until I say something. Sure he did. Back to people giving you money to pay for your wedding. You went into this with the assumption that he would pay for everything. But he got the impression that our parents would pay for the wedding because they tried to pretend they had money even though they didn't really. That's the way it is, isn't it? Yes, yes, but it's not my fault. I didn't know that Roy was just a temporary employee. I think he has a really good salary as a full-time employee, so I never doubted that he would be able to take the job. You are more to blame than me. Why don't you tell me if you know he doesn't earn that much? I had no idea. I feel so lied. I told you about it when I got engaged to him. And you and I have some mutual friends, so I'm sure they mentioned it at some point. No one tries to hide it from you. 
You just don't want to hear about it because it's inconvenient. I know I mentioned that to my parents and I'm pretty sure you were there too. I told you we decided not to get married until he was offered a full-time job. But I guess you didn't listen because you planned to stab me in the back. You should still tell me. I don't care if he chooses me over you. How can you let me think he has a well-paying job when he doesn't? That's basically like me being scammed. I didn't know I was with someone so poor he couldn't even afford a decent wedding. You are a mature woman. Do you really need your sister to treat you like a baby and tell you every little thing? Neither Roy nor I have ever kept the status of our jobs a secret. If you really don't know, it's because you weren't paying attention. You are trying to blame me. Why do you think like that? If the two of you haven't had a conversation about this before, it's your problem. Not me, not my parents, no one. Only you. And you're the one who took him away from me in the first place. Anything that involves Roy becomes your problem when you do it. At that point, his problem is no longer my responsibility. That doesn't change anything. And on top of that, you accuse me of pushing you downstairs and making me a criminal. I was forced to move out because of you. There's no point in trying to put the blame on me. This is 100% your fault. No, that's not it. You are also at fault. In case it's not clear enough, I won't give you any money. Not for your wedding or any other reason. No, Amity, please, I'm your sister. You should help me. Even if I wanted to, I don't have that much money to throw around. Please, I will do anything. If we cannot pay by Sunday, the wedding will have to be cancelled. We've invited a lot of people already. It would be a shame to have to cancel at the last minute. Besides, I don't even have enough money for the cancellation fee if it gets to that point. We have nothing. Please help me even just once. You'll never have to hear from me again if you don't want to. If you help me, I will be a better sister. I promise. I will always be here for you. Please, Amity. After that, Mila kept calling me and texting me afterwards. She even made our parents and Roy do the same. Mila argues that I shouldn't hold a grudge against her and should help her with the wedding expenses. Roy suggested we get back together. But then he had the audacity to ask me for money during a conversation. My parents asked me to come back home. But, again, they also ask for money so I don't believe they are really sincere. Since I switched to work in the hotel industry, it is true that I am making more money. But I still don't earn enough to pay Mila what she asked for. Even if I wanted to. In the end, I had to change my phone number because they wouldn't stop harassing me for money. A friend of mine who is also a friend of Roy's told me that he had cut ties with his family when they found out what had happened. They don't like the idea of him trying to extort money from someone through marriage. In the end, I'm glad I didn't marry him and ended up having to rely on him for the rest of my life. I heard that they could only pay half of the wedding cancellation fee. My parents ended up selling their house for almost nothing. They couldn't do anything anymore. My parents and my sister moved in together in an apartment, but they argued almost every day. The neighbors are constantly complaining about them, so it is likely that they will be forced to move out again. Tom. We need to talk. What the heck are you doing? Are you really serious? What do you want from me? I really don't want to have to talk to you. I also don't have much free time today. What is wrong with you? You shouldn't be talking back to me like this. You should make time to talk to me. There's nothing wrong with me. I just don't want to be talking to you. Don't get so ahead of yourself. I'm your manager. You really need to show me more respect. Do you not realize that my position is above yours? You're my subordinate. All you should be doing is obeying my orders. Yeah, I know that you're my manager. You've told me this countless amounts of times. 
I'm getting tired of hearing the same thing over and over from you. If you know, then you need to show me more respect. You need to stop talking so arrogantly to me. Would you just hurry up and get to the point? I told you to treat me with more respect. Did you not understand that? Please calm down and just tell me what you need to say. Stop wasting so much of my time. I'm going. Who cares about your time? My time is so much more precious than your time. It sounds like you have nothing that's important to say to me. I'm actually busy. I'm gonna get going if you have nothing to say to me. Wait. Hold on a minute. You can't just leave. I've contacted you because I had something to say. Are you stupid or something? If you have something to say to me then hurry up. I told you this earlier but stop wasting my time. Why are you being so arrogant? I thought I told you that I'm your manager. Stop repeating the same phrase over and over. Nobody's gonna respect you if you keep saying that. If you want respect you need to shut your mouth and gain the respect with your actions. I can't believe that you're looking down on me like this. If you keep this up I'm gonna fire you. You wouldn't want that to happen right? LOL. Are you serious about that? What do you think is so funny? I'm being very serious. You're really gonna lose your job if you're not careful. Alright, listen Tom. I also saw that you scheduled to have a paid day off next week. You did that without my permission. I'm gonna fire you if you don't show up at work next week. Are you seriously saying that? That's just abusing your power if you really do that. I took all the necessary steps to get a day off. I filled in all the required paperwork and got it accepted by HR. There shouldn't be any problem with me taking a day off. The problem is with the reason you're taking a day off. Did seriously think that you could skip work for a reason like that? Why would the reason matter at all? According to the company policy, I should be able to do that. I'm planning to attend my younger sister's wedding. There should be absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have every right to attend my own sister's wedding. That is not a valid reason to be skipping work. You really need to be getting your priorities straight. I'm embarrassed that you're even thinking of taking a day off work for a reason like this. Why would you be embarrassed about this? It doesn't make any sense at all. You have to remember that you're my subordinate. You better not think that you can just take a day off without my permission. As a punishment, you're gonna have to work overtime every single day from now on. I'm also going to give you some of my work as a special gift to you. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to say no to that. I don't wanna have to do any of your work. You're pretty much the only manager that wouldn't accept the subordinate taking paid leave. I don't need your permission to take a day off from work. I've already been told by the company that it would be okay. What you're trying to do is against the company's policies. I would stop if I were you. You're just my subordinate. You need to stop telling me what I can do. You should be keeping your mouth shut and listening to my orders. You don't have the authority to be talking back to me like this. I have the right to choose when to take my paid holidays. Do you not even know how paid holidays even work? You should try reading the rules of this company before trying to impose them on me. Do you even know how to read? Of course, I know how to read I'm not a child. You need to stop disrespecting me and insulting me like this. That's what I should be saying to you. I'm not going to allow you to take a paid holiday next week. In fact, I'm gonna assign the huge project to you. You're gonna become the new project leader once the project is completed. I'm gonna take all the credit for it. That does sound like a great plan doesn't it? I'm such a genius. You really are a terrible person. That's such a selfish idea. Are you not embarrassed saying things like this to your subordinates? What? I'm not embarrassed at all. I have every right to use my power like this. What do you even mean by that? I'll tell you what's been going on. But this is to be kept between us okay. I'm gonna be promoted in the near future. There's no way that's ever gonna happen. 
I wonder which idiot decided to spread a rumor like that. It's not a rumor at all. I didn't hear about this from anyone. Actually, I found out about it myself. Then you're definitely not gonna get promoted. You're always wrong about everything that you say. I have no idea why you think that at all. I'm always right about everything. You probably don't know this, but I'm very well liked by my boss. You get along well with the CEO? I find that kind of hard to believe. It's the truth. This is why I know for sure that I'm being promoted soon. Actually, yeah, I've heard rumors about this before. See, I told you. Me and the boss are like best friends right now. I've heard rumors that you act like the boss's dog. You do everything to try to get his approval. How pathetic. What did you just say to me? He doesn't see you as a friend at all. You'd look very desperate. I'm pretty sure the boss already knows how useless you are. All you do is force your work onto your subordinates. I really think that you're getting way too ahead of yourself. I'm not going to forgive you if you keep this up. I don't need you to forgive me at all. I have no respect for you whatsoever. I really don't care what you think of me at all. How dare you say that to me? You should only have respect for me. I feel like you don't really understand the authority I have over you. You wouldn't even have a job if it weren't for me. It wasn't you that decided to employ me. That's the company. I was just unfortunate to be assigned to work under you. I really hate people like you that are useless but act arrogantly just because of the job title. I'm very tired of talking to you. So I'm gonna get going. You have no right to complain to me or punish me for taking a paid holiday. I've already been accepted by the company. You have no right to stop me. I'm gonna get going now. I can't stand you disrespecting me like this anymore. I'm gonna get rid of you right now. You're fired. Wait. What did you just say to me? I just told you that you're fired. There's no need for you to ever come back to this company. Now you got way too ahead of yourself. You should have treated me with more respect. You can't just fire me for no reason. The higher-ups aren't gonna accept this decision. Actually they are going to accept it. I'm gonna make a lie about you making a huge mistake during one of our important projects. That's going to be the reason you get fired. I guess you really underestimated my powers. I can't believe that you would do all of this over a single day of paid leave. Why do you care so much about me taking a single day off? I'm way too tired to be dealing with you. I've really had enough of it. Actually I should be saying that to you. I am tired of you disrespecting me like this. I'm your manager. I really don't understand why you can't just respect me. My other subordinates don't seem to have much trouble doing that. Did you really think that I would allow you to take a day off for your sister's wedding? That's not a good enough reason to take a day off from work. You decided not to listen to my orders so that's why you're fired. Well, you need to know one thing. The wedding I'm planning to attend next Monday is the boss's wedding. What did you just say? The boss's wedding? Stop joking around with me. Yeah, I'm not joking. I think you're pretty much the only person that didn't get invited. Only one that's being left out. If you really want to be respected by others, you should do things that make people want to respect you. Now there is absolutely nothing about you that can be respected. Wait. Hold on a minute. What's happening? Please stop insulting me any further. I'm already pretty shocked about what you just told me. How could I be left out at the boss's wedding? Just how fragile are you? You seem to have no problem dishing out insults to everyone else. Please just explain what's happening to me. Is it true that the boss is having a wedding next week? Why I knew nothing about this. There's no way you should know about it if I haven't heard about it. Do you really not understand what's happening? You really are dumb. My sister is the one getting married to the boss. What? Are you being serious? Yeah. 
and I'm pretty sure the boss isn't going to be happy when he finds out about this. You're not even letting me take a paid leave to attend my sister's wedding. This is against the company's policy. I would love to hear what the boss thinks about this. How is this even happening? Why is your sister getting married to the boss? Where did they even meet in the first place? I've been good friends with the boss for a pretty long time. I was the one that introduced him to my sister. They got along pretty well and ended up dating after I introduced them to each other. You and the boss are good friends? How is that possible? We both went to the same university. That's where I first met him. We took a bunch of classes together and ended up becoming friends. I didn't think that I would end up working for his company though. He didn't think that he would become my boss either. I actually talked to him the other day. He said the reason that he became the CEO of this company was because his father had to retire early. He wasn't expecting to become the boss that soon. So he was working under lots of pressure. He told me that he was having trouble dealing with you as well. I also heard that you kept on sucking up to him. It was obvious that you were looking for a promotion. I have no idea that you guys are friends. You should have told me earlier. Why should I have to tell you that? You're not even going to be here that much longer anyway. Wait. What does that even mean? It's not that hard to understand. You're no longer going to be part of this company. Why would I have to leave this company? I haven't done anything wrong. There's a lot of bad rumors going around about you. Everyone at the company thinks that you're a crazy manager. Have you really not noticed how everyone has been talking about you? Is what you just said really true? Do people actually think that I'm crazy? Yeah, everyone thinks that about you. I can totally understand why. Did you really think that people in this company thought positively of you? Of course. Everyone thinks positively of me. Everyone but you shows me a lot of respect. I'm projected to get a promotion pretty soon after all. Yeah, you're just making an assumption about that. In reality, nobody talks back to you because they think you're hopeless. Nobody talks to you because they all hate you. It's not because they respect you or anything. You're also not on track to get promoted. You're on track to get fired. I'm starting to feel a little sorry for you. What are you talking about? I'm not making any assumptions. Everything that I just said is really true. Me and the boss are best friends. There's no way he's kicking me out of this company. I'm telling you that's a misunderstanding as well. Boss doesn't see you as a friend at all. If you really were his best friend, he would have invited you to his wedding. Have you received a wedding invite from him? No, there's probably a good reason for that. He probably sent the wedding invitation to the wrong dress or something. We all make a mistake from time to time. I'm really surprised how positive you are. You really should just accept the reality. He told me directly that he doesn't think very positively of you. Boss definitely doesn't see you as a friend at all. In fact, he was saying that you were a huge nuisance as you don't obey the company's policies at all. It definitely didn't sound like he wanted you at the company for much longer. Wait. Is that what the boss really said? Yeah, he did. I think you're either gonna get fired or transferred to another department in the countryside. No way. I buy my life in this city. You shouldn't be saying that to me. I'm not the one that decides where you get transferred. So, that's enough. I'm gonna be taking my paid holiday. Regardless of what you say to me. There's no point trying to stop me. I don't need your permission to take this day off. This isn't fair at all. I want to go to the boss's wedding as well. I don't think you can go if you weren't invited. There's one more thing that I should tell you. You need to clean out the office that you're using right now. You're no longer going to be manager of this department. I'm going to be taking over as the manager. I want that office to be cleaned for when I move into. No way. Are you really gonna become the manager instead of me? Why do I have to be moved? 
I don't understand why you're getting a promotion either. None of this makes any sense. Well, you have no respect or trust from any one of your subordinates. So that's easy to understand. You're just not the right kind of person to be the manager. You really need to accept reality. The way that you've been treating your subordinates is really unacceptable. Hurry up and clean the room. My house is overrun with pests. I have two burdensome freeloaders cohabitating with me. What a pity. Wouldn't you agree, Flora? Two freeloaders? Are you referring to me and Tony? Who else am I referring to? Thanks to my son, you're enjoying the privilege of living here without paying rent and eating for free. You're essentially taking advantage of the situation without contributing anything in return. How lucky for you. I'm currently enjoying a cup of coffee with some friends, and our conversation has shifted towards discussing our respective in-laws. They helped me realize how fortunate you are. I have to disagree. I go to work and then get labeled as a freeloader by my mother-in-law. Please don't call me that, by the way. It isn't right. Oh my! Aren't you a feisty one? You are the one who forcefully entered my house, carrying that unsightly child of yours. After the birth of that child, all you do is remain at home, entertaining yourself with it, neglecting any substantial responsibilities. What would you call that sort of lifestyle? You're just taking advantage of me. Do you think you're a queen bee and I'm just a worker? Play? I look after my child while also working at home. And I also do the housework. Work? I don't know what sort of lie you're trying to spin there. All you do is play around using my son's money. What an audacious little thing you are to try and claim otherwise. If you would only look after Tony then I would be able to work more. I hope you're joking, but that's not even funny. What a bad sense of humor you have. What? But it's true. You want me to look after that ugly spawn of yours? It is seriously the ugliest baby I've ever seen. I honestly doubt that that thing is even Harry's child. You were probably knocked up by some other guy that you met on the wrong side of town. Um, just the thought of that makes me sick. Why do you have to say things like that? You're being so rude. What did I ever do to you? And believe me, if Harry wasn't the father, I wouldn't be here. And if I wasn't here then you two would be in a very tight spot. Tight spot? Just because you're not here? My! Don't you think highly of yourself? I never wanted you to be here in the first place. Same with that spawn of yours too. You need to stop wallowing in denial and just accept that this is how things are. Tony is your grandchild. But you shouldn't be harping on us. You need to talk to Harry as well. He's the one that needs to change. Excuse me? I know you're not going to start criticizing my precious Harry now now. Who's being rude? He's already a full-grown adult. He's 30. I don't think it's appropriate to call him your precious anymore. He's my son. I can call him whatever I want. You stay out of it. You didn't give birth to a boy, so you can't understand. A boy is the best thing that you can have. They are precious, and they will always be your child. Only to you. As far as everyone else is concerned, he is an able-bodied citizen. At the very least, he needs to learn how to take care of himself. Right now he can hardly even dress himself. So what? His workplace doesn't have a dress code. He can wear whatever he wants. If his workplace doesn't say anything, then who are you to give your opinion? That's what you think. You, is that your attitude? Harry and I took you in and this is how you treat us? Karma is going to come back and get you. Mark my words. You'll get what you deserve. Don't come crying to me when something bad happens to you. I'll keep that in mind. 
Anyway, this conversation is going nowhere. We should just stop. It's time for Tony's bath anyway. Is this Flora? Yes, it is. And who is this? My name is Ina. Sorry, but I don't know any Ina. I'm so sorry. What? Why are you apologizing? I've been dating Harry. I'm so sorry. You've been dating my husband? You're joking. It's true. But I swear I didn't know that he had a wife and child. I would never have dated him if I knew. Really now? Then? What do you want with me? Are you going to tell me to break up with him? Of course I am. But that's not why I contacted you. I just wanted to apologize. Well that's not fair. What do you mean by fair? So you're just apologizing because you feel guilty about what you did. Did you think that would absolve you of everything? I really am sorry. I never wanted to cheat. My father. He cheated on my mother multiple times when I was a child. I saw how my mother suffered. That's why when I found out that Harry was married, I just couldn't stay silent. I also want to warn you. Harry has been seeing other women as well. I'm not the only one. What? Other women? Yes. I was shocked too. I'm not his only girlfriend. I know this might be hard to hear but I had to tell you. Are you telling the truth? How do I know you're not just lying to me to scare me off so that you can be with him? That's not what I'm trying to do. I have proof. That man is a pig. Even though you're his wife it honestly feels like he's been cheating on me as well. And he's been cheating on both of us with others. I know that it really isn't my place to tell you all this but I just couldn't let it keep happening. Thank you for letting me know, I guess. I spent all day taking care of my child so I don't have time to get out of the house. I didn't even suspect that he was cheating on me. I really am so so sorry. I have always been aware of how much pain my father caused me and my mother. I never wanted to be a part of what he did to us. But somehow, I grew up to be involved in something just like it. I feel like I'm just as bad as he was. I can't express how truly and deeply sorry I really am. You said that your name is Ina? Yes, that's right. Thank you for telling me the truth. For what it's worth, I do believe that your apology is genuine. Thank you so much. Please let me extend my apologies to your child as well. I never wanted to hurt her and I never wanted any child to go through what I went through. If you have any photographic evidence, may I have it? I will forgive you if you give those pictures to me. Yes, of course. I'll give them all to you. Thank you for cooperating with me. I forgive you so please stop torturing yourself over this. You seem like a good girl and I know that you can find a much better man than a horrible pig like my husband. Free yourself from that relationship and I hope that you can find a proper man. I wish you all the best. Thank you for saying that. Again. I'm really sorry. I'm done having leeches like you in my house and taking up my space. Hurry up and pack your things. Get out right now! What? Are you serious right now? I don't need you or your spawn in my life. All I need is my son. We are fine without you. I've already filed for divorce so you need to get out. Don't forget to take your spawn with you. Your leeching days are over. Leeching? Your son is the only one who is leeching off of people. I am not interested in any more of your slander against my son. Just get out! And what do you mean you filed for divorce? How could you possibly have done that? 
I found a divorce petition earlier today, already signed. I just took the liberty of dropping it off for you. Ah. You stole my thunder. I was looking forward to the day when I can file for divorce. Harry and I signed those papers way back along with our marriage certificate. We only got married because I got pregnant. I wanted to make sure that I had an escape route if things didn't work out so as part of our prenup I had him sign divorce papers as well. That was the only way I was going to marry him. Why on earth would you have wanted to do that? Why would you even want to divorce my beautiful son? Why? That's such an easy answer. It's because he's a good-for-nothing leech. If he wanted to divorce me he wouldn't be able to live the cushiony life that he has now. He tried his best to tie me down. What? Are you even talking about? He supports you and your little brat. You do know that he still hasn't given up on his music, right? That's just a hobby. So he plays a bit of music when he has some free time. What about it? That doesn't make him a bad person, and it's not a reason why you should call him a leech. Oh, but you are so sadly mistaken. He is still hoping to make it big and live off of his music. What? Live off of his music? What about his job? He leaves the house every day to go to work, doesn't he? He doesn't. When he goes out every morning, he isn't going to work at some office. He's actually going to band rehearsals. You've seen his rocker outfits, right? No job would ever allow him to dress like that. So did she really think that he was going to some office dressed like that? Why not? Companies these days aren't as stiff as they used to be. People can wear whatever they want. But you're saying that he isn't working. That can't be true. Maybe you'll believe me when I tell you how much he makes. He only brings home about $200 a month. And that would be considered a good month. What? Only $200 a month? Why, yes. He does live gigs on Friday nights. The rest of the week is spent rehearsing. Oh, and recently he started his own YouTube channel. After paying studio rental fees and other things. He's only left with $200. It might be a small amount, but he is still getting paid. You need to apologize for calling him a leech. That's it? That's what you chose to focus on? Don't you have anything else to say about him? About the way he is living? Do you need to know what the definition of a leech is? A leech is a person that doesn't even contribute a single penny to the household. And they rely on others to live. But that isn't my son. He's contributing something. So he isn't a leech. Harry is up there working hard and trying to make his dream come true. That's admirable. He's even able to bring money home while doing it. He might be bringing that money inside the house, but it's definitely not going towards anything for the family. What is he doing with it then? He uses that money to pay for cigarettes instead. He said that he has to look like a rocker. And act like a rocker he claims the rockers have to smoke and that they can't vape because that isn't the rock life. The price of cigarettes has gone up every year. I'm sure you're aware of his smoking habits. He smokes a pack a day and he doesn't care where he does it. Even when Tony is in the same room as him, he still lights up. I thought he only did that because this job causes him stress. But a lot of people smoke. Nope. He only does it to look and act cool. He basically smokes the little money that he makes away. He's really good for nothing. But it really doesn't matter anymore because I don't have to deal with him from now on. He's not my problem anymore. I was only holding everything in for the sake of our daughter. But thanks to you, I don't have to do that anymore either. Now wait a minute. Thank you so much, Naomi. You saved me. You talked a lot of smack about me, but at the very end you did me a huge favor. Thank you. You saved me from going through all the trouble myself. 
You're going to be taking over the bill payments, right? Someone will need to pay the electric bill, the taxes, the phone bill and buy all the food. Oh, and the rent of course. You're going to be doing that from now on, right? You are the one who has been paying all that? Yes. Who else? Your son definitely doesn't make enough money to pay any of those. He doesn't have any money at all. I'm actually quite a successful writer. All I need to do is write articles during my free time and I can make a thousand dollars a week. A thousand dollars a week? Actually I was in a pickle. I already achieved financial independence and my love for Harry had burned out a long time ago. I was going to file for divorce soon. I went to the shelf where I had put the divorce papers but was shocked when I couldn't find them there. I thought I must have misplaced the envelope somewhere. Where did you find them? They were underneath my mattress. I was changing my sheets and they just fell out like a little gift from God. Oh, I see. Harry didn't want me to get a divorce so he must have hidden them in your room. So not only did you find the papers for me but you handed them over to the courthouse as well. Thank you very much for doing that. Now I will finally be able to be free. Wait. Just wait a second. Do you really intend on throwing my son away like that? Yes. In a heartbeat. It might take a while for the divorce to be granted but I don't see the reason why I should stay here any longer. My job here is done. Enjoy your life with your precious son. By the way, Harry has a gig this weekend so he won't be back until tomorrow afternoon. In the meantime, I'll be gathering my things and getting out of here by tonight. No! You can't do that! Just listen to me for a second, Flora! I'm sorry for saying all those horrible things to you. I had no idea what was going on. So could you please forgive me? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to forgive you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to forgive you. What? But I asked really nicely. I'm your mother-in-law and I'm asking for forgiveness. How can you be so cold? Because it's too late. And by the way, I am going to be coming at him hard in the divorce proceedings. Expect the alimony to be substantial. Like $50,000 substantial. We're thinking of getting it up front as well. With his lifestyle, there's no guarantee that he'll be able to pay monthly. $50,000? Are you crazy? You called me a leech all the while Harry was cheating on me with several women. I had to suffer from that. And on top of that, I was paying for everything. I was carrying a very heavy burden. My lawyer said that I can ask for pain and suffering compensation. Lawyer? You talked to a lawyer already? Of course. I couldn't find the divorce paper so I had to contact a lawyer to help jaw another one up. But again, thanks to you you found the papers. I don't have to pay the lawyer for document fees. You saved me again. Oh my goodness! What have I done? Harry is going to be so mad when he finds out that I was the one that handed in the papers. I hate it when he gets mad. I can't get through to him once he has flown off the handle. You know how he gets when he's angry. Oh, I definitely know. There's no stopping him when he gets angry. He just needs to burn himself out. I have been on the receiving end of his anger while you just go hide in your room. But the only way to calm him down a bed is with money. Money? That's how you got him to stop his rampage? Yes. There's no other way that would work. How much does it cost? Do you have any idea how much it cost for him to do his gigs? He needs to pay for transportation as well as clothes? It costs quite a bit so my best advice for you is to not get him angry. But I don't have any money. I don't have an income. I just live off of my pension. Oh, and I haven't even thought about child support yet. I deserve that as well. Actually, Tony deserves that. And it's not like he's any kind of good influence so I think she'll be much better off with the money than with him around. How can you even say about that? You're so cold. You're evil. 
Don't you have any empathy at all? Don't talk to me about empathy. You have been exploiting me ever since I got together with Harry. You haven't even shown me an inch of kindness since the beginning. This is karma coming back to get you. You reap what you sow. In the end, Naomi achieved her desired outcome. She was able to live independently with her son. She quickly discovered that Harry was spending a significantly larger amount of money than she could have ever anticipated. Naomi had no other option but to end her retirement and take up a part-time position at a fast-food establishment in order to contribute towards their expenses. She had envisioned a peaceful life after retiring, but her son's actions shattered that dream completely. She inadvertently contributed to the situation by indulging Harry excessively, leading to the current circumstances. She will bear the consequences of that mistake for the remainder of her existence. As for myself, witnessing the effects of excessive parental indulgence, I aspire to strike a harmonious balance between affection and firm guidance when raising my own daughter. Alice, we need to talk. What can I help you, Mom? Your father and I are going to be moving tomorrow. Hold on. Where did this come from? This isn't something you just drop on someone out of nowhere. That's why I'm telling you now we are moving tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, you are going to be living alone. Mom, I don't think I quite understand everything that's going on here. Where are you moving to? We're moving to Maya's house. Starting tomorrow, we're going to be living with her. What? You're abandoning me out of nowhere and decide to move in with my big sister. But... Is Maya's house actually an apartment, isn't it? And she is paying rent for it monthly, right? How are you planning on living there? Your moving there just causes trouble with her lease. You really are stupid. Excuse me. Of course, we aren't planning to live in her apartment. There's no way we'd do something like that. Then where do you all intend to live? I still find this all incredibly hard to believe, Mom. We're going to be living in a new house. I'm talking about a new house that Maya's family built a new house. Maya and her family built a house? Yes, that's right. The house is a duplex. And they built it for your father and me. I see, Mom. That's good to hear, but why am I only hearing about this now? I haven't heard a thing from Maya about having built a new house nor about any moving. Plan. What? Why do you think we had to talk to you about it? It's not like we need your permission to do anything. Well, it would have actually been a problem if we had talked to you about it earlier. What do you mean by that? If I had talked to you before, you would have just done everything you could to tag along with us. You would have tried to shamelessly guilt trip us into bringing you along. That's what Maya was worrying about. What are you talking about? Why on earth would I want to go along with you? What makes you think I would be? Come on, Alice. Look at you. You're already 28 and you're still single and living with your parents. Meanwhile, Maya's husband is a very successful business manager and a super rich. It's not strange at all to think that you'd want to take advantage of their money. I have no idea how you could have come to such a ridiculous conclusion. You know how much I've hated Maya? She's always bullying me and rubbing her every little success in my face. Do you think I would just forget about all of that and want to move into her house? That would be the furthest thing from my mind. I'm nowhere near that desperate. Don't be rude, Alice. It was just a reasonable guess like I said earlier. This is what Maya was worried about. She was thinking that maybe you try to barge in on her life and ruin her family's happy life in her new home. If things ended up like that it would mean serious trouble for me too. Mom, that response certainly doesn't surprise me in the slightest. This is how you've always been always thinking of Maya over me. What makes you think I would ever want to come along and continue living with uncaring parents like you? Not only that. 
You told me some time ago that living alone and single would have looked poorly on me to begin with. You are the one who was whining so much about the idea of me living alone that I just decided to stay with you so you would shut up about it. Don't go acting like I ever intended to live in this house ever since I became an adult. It's all because of your whining that I'm still here. Stop trying to act tough around me, Alice. It's not going to work. Don't try to lie and say it was anything else other than you wanting to just live off us like a worthless parasite. Oh, sure. That's just the kind of thing I'd expect to hear from someone like you someone who left me to do every last bit of housework like I was your maid. People like you often try to say something like that to your kids when they start speaking up against you. Well, whatever. Since you're moving out tomorrow, I'll finally get to say goodbye to all of your bull once and for all. Frankly, I'm relieved to hear that that's what you've decided to do. I suppose I'll just look forward to finally living how I want to. Oh, and one last thing I need to tell you. You had better continue living in that house, got it? Excuse me? I'd prefer to move as soon as I possibly can. I would be happy to not live one more second in this house. There's no reason for me to have to follow any such demand. Don't think I'll let you get away with doing that. You do realize that that house is our family home, right? I would never forgive you if you just selfishly abandoned our family's property. Are you crazy? Are you even listening to what you're saying? If you care so much about this house, the two of you should be the ones to take care of it. Not me. What? There's no way we would be able to do something like that. Just think for one second. Once we move, your father and I are going to be so busy helping Maya every day. You do realize Maya is working too, right? Since she's working she's asked her father and me to deal with all of the housework. It's ridiculous to think that we would be able to take care of our old house when we'll be so busy already in Maya's. That only leaves you. Everything will turn out just fine if you just live in our old house and take care of it yourself. What do you think I can handle all of this on my own? You're crazy. That's out of the question. How about we look at how you're only telling me this the day before you move out? You haven't discussed this with me at all. So I have no need to listen to you either. How dare you? Are you forgetting who raised you? What makes you think you can act like this towards your mother? I just don't understand how you could have grown to be this ungrateful insolent woman when Maya turned out perfectly. At the very least, if you had just gotten a job with a thousand dollars or something, then this would be a totally different story. So now you're trying to insult me because of what kind of work I do. I'd appreciate it if you didn't badmouth every aspect of my life. I suppose I can't just cry about how it's so unfair that you only think about Maya. I'm far too old for something childish like that. I am already well aware that no matter what I say to you, you won't give me the time of day. You clearly gave up on me ages ago. That's right. I guess I did raise you into someone who can at least understand some things. Then I'll be counting on you starting tomorrow. And you won't need anything to eat for dinner tonight. Your father and I are going to be eating out with Maya's family. So I won't be there to make anything for you. Whatever. Enjoy your dinner out with the only family you actually care about. I don't exactly want to see your faces at all after today. So I'll be staying at a friend's place tonight. Excuse me? What about helping us with our move? If you don't get everything packed up for us, it will cause trouble for everyone. I figured you would say that. It's amazing just how unbelievably predictable you are. Why do you think I'm going to a friend's house in the first place? You're the ones who decided to plan all this behind my back in the first place? Why not take this as your first chance to get used to living life without relying on me? You'll be fine, I'm sure. What? You had better stay right at home. I'm telling you that there will be serious trouble if you don't help us with preparing for the move. Alice. Living in a new house is just so nice. 
This is just the kind of life I would expect from having such a successful businessman as a son-in-law. I've never before experienced such an elegant refined lifestyle. Mom. Seriously? If you want to gush about how amazing your life is, you can just write it in a diary or perhaps talk to someone who actually cares. There's no need to keep messaging me about everything. Living together with Maya's family must be the best thing. Mom. You disobedient little wretch. Since I first told you about our move, you haven't even shown your face to me. And you've just been out playing with your friends and acting all innocent. You're still keeping that promise you made to me, aren't you? There will be serious consequences if you aren't. Promise? Don't play dumb. I'm talking about you living at our old house and taking proper care of it. Have you been cleaning it daily? There will be serious trouble if you have been neglecting it. I'm certainly living in the house right now. But apart from that I don't see why you feel the need to be constantly telling me to do. It's nothing more than a nuisance. I don't know why I'm even surprised that you continue to talk back like this to me anymore. When are you going to finally grow up and learn to accept some responsibility? It would be so much better if you could just learn even a little bit from Maya. She's a proper daughter who respects her parents and treats them properly. What? You even care at this point? Instead of constantly worrying about a daughter like me who according to you can't amount to anything. Why aren't you just focusing on living happily ever after with your favorite daughter Maya? Isn't talking to me just putting a damper on your happy new life with the only daughter that matters to you? I wouldn't put it like that. I'm not even close to worried about you. All your father and I are worried about is if our house is still in pristine condition. I'm only talking to you to make sure you're taking good care of it. This was originally something we were hoping to leave to some agency or another that could take care of it for us. But we figured it would be a waste of money when we have our parasitic daughter around. So we thought it would just be easiest to leave it to you. We've been doing you a favor by leaving you a place to live. So, it shouldn't be so strange for us to just ask you to take care of the place. Sorry, Mom. I have no idea what you're talking about. You should just stop worrying about me and go enjoy your fun new life in your new house. I'm in the house, that's all that matters, right? I suppose yes. I guess Maya and I just worry too much. No matter how anxious we get about what you could be neglecting. If we worry about it every day, it would just take years off of our lives. Whatever, Mum. I don't see how continuing to make snide remarks at me is helping anything either. So I'm just going to go. Bye. You are such a disgusting daughter. Whatever. Remember you need to keep taking good care of the house. Alice. Where are you at? Text me right back. What's wrong, Mom? It's 6 a.m. I'm even sleeping. I tell you countless times that you had to take good care of the house. Excuse me? I am taking good care of the house I'm living. What? You're living in our house, aren't you? I'm getting complaints from everyone. The neighborhood has been complaining to us about a cat living at our house. That cat is pooping all over our garden. Our old neighbors have noticed the smelly scent and are complaining to us about it. Huh? The cat? I have no idea, Mom. I don't own a cat. I don't know what they're complaining about. There's not a single cat in or around the house. And garden? There's no garden at my house. I'm living in an apartment, sorry. What do you mean by that? An apartment? What are you talking about? Don't you think it would be more helpful to go looking at your old house first? If there's all those complaints coming in from the neighbors, it might be better to go check the damage for yourself. It sounds to me like there might be some problems you're going to have to deal with. What in the world happened here? The place looks utterly desolate. How could you let it fall into such disrepair? 
You said you were taking care of the house. What? Didn't you hear me the first time? I am taking care of my house. Or rather my apartment. Oh right, there's one other thing I'm taking care of right now. You just happened to text me as I was finishing up some important work. I have been working to isolate every aspect of my life from all of you. So you can never interfere with my affairs again. What are you talking about? This isn't something you just drop on someone out of nowhere. What do you mean? Like how you and Dad did the same to me with your whole moving out. There shouldn't be any problem with me just telling you this now. It's not like I felt you needed to know anything about it. I'm just treating you the exact same way you treated me. You certainly didn't think it was important to let me know you were planning to move. And yet you still expected me to help you prepare everything on top of that you try to make me take care of the house you are leaving behind. What I'm doing should fall perfectly well within the bounds of what you seem to find as acceptable behavior. What are you talking about? You're basically saying you're disowning us. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Alice. Moving out and disowning your family are two completely different things. Moreover, where are you right now? The house is absolutely caked with dust. You aren't cleaning the house daily like you promised. Mom, I never made a single promise to you about cleaning a house. I told you I was cleaning my house. My apartment is also my house, Mom. They are the same. How could you do something like this to us? Don't act like any of you ever even cared that much about me. As long as I can remember you all have only seen me as your servant. We never thought that. Oh, really? How about we take a quick look back at what's gone? You started off by suddenly telling me your daughter that you were moving out of your house one day before you planned to move. You planned to move you expected me to do most of the moving work for you. Then try to order me to take care of the house after you were gone. You weren't letting me live there as thanks for how much I helped you. You were making it sound like an obligation. You did everything you possibly could to try to force me to handle caring for the house you were essentially abandoning. Is that the kind of treatment you think a daughter deserves? Do you think they'd see the relationship as mother and daughter or master and servant? What are you talking about? All of that was Maya's fault. I mean, just look at how differently the two of you were acting. Not only were you single you were nothing but a parasite latching onto and living off of us instead of living out there on your own. Maya on the other hand married a rich husband and did what she can to let us live a happy life. It should be obvious of course we would pay more attention to Maya. Is that because Maya married a rich man, it's her fault that you treated me like garbage? I'd say the fault pretty clearly lies with you. You didn't want to have to deal with managing a house or the difficulties that just come with living. So you made me do everything. What makes you think you have the right to talk to me like that? Honestly, Mom. Expecting someone else to keep a promise you made without even telling them? No one would do something like that. That house is not my house. I don't see why I even need to tell you this. But it's the obligation of the owner of the house to take care of it, isn't it? If you didn't want to shoulder the responsibility yourself, then maybe you should have thought a bit more about the person you wanted to leave it to. But I guess it's just too late to go taking back everything you did now. Good luck cleaning up the house. Hold on, Alice. Come on. You could at least just help us with the house, couldn't you? I would appreciate it if you didn't try to treat my family like your own personal workhorses. You all are nothing to me now. I don't consider any of you my family. Please do not contact me ever again. Bye. After that last conversation, I felt I owed them an explanation as to what my mess of a family had been doing. It took a while to explain to them all the horrible things my toxic family had done to me. But when I was finally done, my mother-in-law wept and embraced me. It made me happier than I could have ever imagined in a moment. 
burying my face into her chest as she reassuringly patted my head from that point on. I never returned to that house full of memories of a horrible upbringing with terrible parents. I started living a happy new life together with my husband and his family. My only family.